The secret to succeeding in Frostborn is completing the Sanctum of Odin. This requires clearing the guest hall and killing the giant chief which gives you a key to unlock the Sanctum. The Sanctum has a lot more enemies including the necromancer boss who drops a forge key. Three forge keys unlock the forge which is an even harder challenge ending in an epic fight with the iron golem in a room filled with fireballs. And then completing the forge unlocks the archives which is arguably the hardest challenge in all mobile gaming because even four skilled players with great gear will be demolished by this challenge if they do not know what they are doing. So in this video I am going to show you everything you need to know about completing the Sanctum. In order to enter the Sanctum of the Sanctum of Odin, you will need to get a key by killing the Giant Chief. I explained the best way to do this in my last video of this series, covering the best way to clear the guest hall. In that video, I also explain how difficult it is for me to predict exactly how many resources you will need to bring with you because it is highly dependent on your class and whether or not you have instigator gear yet. That being said, if I am completing the challenge solo, I usually bring these items. Having a higher level Berserk significantly changes how many green weapons you need, Pathfinder affects how many bows I need, and the Sorcerer class changes how many fire grenades I need. And then lastly, whether or not I've gotten instigator gear significantly lowers the need of every item I use when I'm not getting hit. If I've already done the forge and gotten a fire dagger, then those resources are reduced to this, and the level of rogue or assassin really only affects how often I have to repair my fire dagger. And then lastly, if I'm playing with a team of two or more, then I can replace all of the green melee weapons with spear. So now that I've given you a rough estimate on how many materials you might need, let's talk about how to take on the 74 enemies of the Sanctum. The most efficient path to take is to clear these 5 enemies, go through this door and take out these 2 enemies, and then clear a path all the way up to this hub with 4 doors. Usually at this time, players like to take a break and search the 2 unguarded loot rooms here and here. After that, it is best to clear this room with 3 enemies, and then undertake the 8 enemies of this room, which will end up being the most difficult room of the this challenge if you are using this approach, but it also has one of the best loot chests, sometimes giving purple weapons. After that, you should take out these two enemies to gain access to another free loot room. And then I'll explain how you can sneak past this giant to clear these three enemies and then sneak past this giant and aggro this guy to kill him. After that, you are ready to take on the Necromancer in which I will be showing you two efficient ways to do this. And then around this time, preferably before, you will want to use this lever to open the adjacent door so that the challenge becomes a circle, giving you a lot more mobility as you clear the rest of the challenge. After killing the Necromancer, you or your team will want to meticulously kill all of the small enemies so that only giants remain. This then allows you to round up all of the giants into one giant group and kill all of them with just a few fire grenades. So let's go through this step by step. When you first enter the Sanctum, it is important to open this chest and put all of your extra weapons in there so that if you die, they won't lose durability. When you open the first door, three enemies will attack you, which is not a good fight. In fact, if you ever find yourself fighting more than one enemy, you are not following this tutorial. So you will need to reset these enemies. The fastest way to do this is to have a teammate that has unlocked the Illusionist to use either of his skills to reset the enemies. If that is not an option, then you can simply have one teammate open the door and then immediately run to the exit to reset them. Increasing your speed in this process can help prevent you from getting hit, but it's not necessary. Once they are reset, you will want to bring them out one at a time and use the approach that I explained in my previous video covering the guest hall. If you have a good sneak attack weapon, then you can get sneak attacks on both of these guys before finishing them off. After the room is cleared, you will obviously want to open the door on the left because that is the route we are taking, but I also recommend opening the door on the right by approaching the right side of the door as you open it so that you don't aggro the giant. By having both of these doors open, you now have access to a loop, which can be incredibly helpful in certain oh crap situations. At this point, you will want to sneak just far enough so that this enemy sees you. When he does and starts running towards you, immediately retreat while continuing to sneak until you are out of range of his partner so that you can take him on by himself. After that, sneak up on his partner and take him out. This allows you to open this door which has two ranged enemies on the other side. As I pointed out in my last video, sharpshooters are incredibly difficult enemies and if you are playing solo, you will want to equip bandages for this 
fight. When you are ready, hug the left wall until he notices you, and then immediately run behind this corner so that you eliminate his range advantage when you are taking him out. After this, do the same with the sorcerer, but you will notice that he is a lot easier. That being said, it is still very important to dodge his burning attack because it does 80 initial damage and 40 burning damage which ignores armor. At this point, you can open the free loot room and then continue to take on your first stone giant. Stone giants are often the most memorable part of the Sanctum because they likely killed your entire team the first five times you tried to kill them. In fact, I would not be surprised if a large percentage of people watching this video are coming here because of a terrible experience they had with a stone giant. Stone giants have a basic attack of 120 and his skilled attack of 300 damage is carried out quickly and has incredibly long range. This combination makes an inexperienced team extremely vulnerable to getting wiped out over and over again. Using simple bows against the stone giant prevents him from using his basic and gives you a little bit more reaction time in dodging his special attack, but the most efficient way to kill the stone giant is to run over and hide behind this door frame, and then when he arrives, pop out, hit him three times, and then run to this door frame to repeat the process. If you are doing this with a team, it is important to note that stone giants perform their skill a lot quicker than the giant chief, so an uncoordinated team is is a dead one. After the stone giant is dead, you can open this door and reset these enemies either with an illusionist or by running all the way to the entrance to reset them. After resetting them, you can draw out enemies 1, 2, 4, and 5 one at a time and then sneak attack number 3 and 6. When this room is cleared, you can open this free loot room and then begin to open this door. These two enemies also need to be reset so that you can kill them one at a time, but the wood giant poses some new challenges because even though his basic attack is only 59, his special which does 113 damage, covers a large area and includes an 8 second stun. So if you are a talented 4 person team, you can still kill wood giants with spears by taking turns healing and only attacking between special attacks. But if you have less than 4 players, I recommend reverting to simple bows, and luckily this is the only wood giant you will have to kill using this more difficult approach. After killing the third enemy of this room and opening this door, you will need to again reset the enemies and draw them out one at a time. This process does not include any tactics that I have not already shown you, but I do recommend saving this sharpshooter for last so that you can get a sneak attack on it. After this room is cleared, I recommend opening this chest because it is arguably the best chest in the Sanctum with a chance of having a purple weapon. And then make your way down and clear out these two shamans one at a time, which gives you access to this free loot room. At this point, if you are with a team, you will want to have one of your teammates lead the stone giant away while you open this room and then go ahead and reset everything. You can then use this free loot room to attract these enemies one at a time, ending with the ability to sneak past the stone giant and getting a sneak attack on the last guy. After that, you can sneak past this stone giant, and then when you are safely in this room, I recommend attracting this small enemy to come attack you, because otherwise he might see you at an inopportune time. You have now arrived at the Draugr Necromancer. At this time, I recommend having one teammate lure the Necromancer north so that you can open these three doors and create a proper loop, thus creating a lot more mobility to work with. You can also achieve this in a solo setting using two speed potions by attracting the Necromancer to use his skill here, and then use a speed potion while sneaking to get past these two stone giants, and then taking her around a long loop, double backing around, and using another speed potion to sneak past them again. The first way to kill the necromancer is the same approach as the giant chief and stone giants, but unless you have a coordinated team or are using very strong weapons, this approach takes a very long time. So the second efficient way is to use simple bows. The easiest way to do this is to have one teammate lead her around the others, allowing them to not ever stop shooting. But if you are part of a smaller or less coordinated team, it is pretty easy to predict her pattern and just shoot the bow while she is performing her skill. When she dies, she will drop multiple types of each pendant, two good items, and a key to the forge. Once you have three forge keys, you can do the forge, but keep in mind that the forge is significantly harder than the sanctum, so make sure you have enough time and resources to complete that challenge before Odin's resets. If you do not know how hard that challenge is, or what resources you need, make sure to check out my next video in this series where I cover everything you need to know about the forge. With the necromancer dead, you will want to start the tedious process of clearing 
clearing out all of the small enemies one by one. Sometimes this requires resetting rooms, but nothing in this process is an exception to the tactics I have already explained. Once all of the small enemies are dead except for these three, switch over to the Sorcerer if you have it, put on Instigator boots and helmet, equip your highest damage aura support staff, a stack of mushroom soup, and load up 20 to 40 fire grenades. Then proceed to attract all of the giants and odins into one giant herd. If you have bad lag or a crappy phone, then this might not be the best option for you. Many of the giants that you are trying to attract are behind doors, so if you are new to this, you might have to take the loot two or three times before you have successfully gotten all of the giants into one group. As you carry out this task, it is important to take wide turns so that the giants furthest from you end up getting a shorter path, thus bringing the group of giants closer and closer together. Once you have the 21 giants in a very tight-knit group, go ahead and take the mushroom soup and start throwing fire grenades as often as it lets you. You'll notice that the fire grenade does an instant burst of damage and then some damage over time. It is important that if you are in a team not to throw fire grenades at the same time or you will miss out on this extra damage over time for one of those throws. This is also a very important time to have tournaments active and to coordinate with the tournaments of your teammates, but I will talk more about that in a different video. After all of the giants are dead, you have to kill those three little enemies that are left, but after that, your only task left is to loot everything and haul the loads and loads of materials home, which even with a good backpack can often take quite a few trips. Now you will notice that I did not open either of these rooms. That is because this room requires at least one reset and takes a lot of work and resources to get only one chest and then this one is more obvious because there is no loot in the room. Some players have been intrigued by this dirt area at the top of the eight enemy room and there have even been some bugs where people have gotten stuck inside this wall because of their fascination with it but it is just a decorative flair and has nothing special about it. No secret room, no unlockable content, just some dirt in a wall. Lastly, after using marks to clear the guest hall, it costs an additional 95 marks to clear the sanctum, and this is an example of the type of loot you will get. This is pretty comparable to what you would get for completing the challenge, but you also get the choice to keep it in your inbox, which means that it cannot be raided and you can pull it out at any time you want anywhere on the map, which is a huge advantage for those using marks. Well, that's it guys, hope that helps. Remember that I already have a video like this for the guest hall and the forge is coming soon. So if you have problems with any of these other sections of Odin's, make sure to check those out. All right guys, I'll see you next time.